Europeans deeply anger, angry rather, over their governments cutting welfare benefits while hiking taxes are making their voices heard with loud protests across the continent. They say they don't want to pay for the mistakes of politicians and bankers. Yet Americans facing similar struggles aren't showing the same passion and fury. Priya Schreeder looks at why Europeans are doing better at trying to protect their pockets. It's October 2010, and while things aren't looking too good, Americans and Europeans have reacted to the tough times very differently. Unfortunately, you can't tell from this, but only with mass struggle can there be a positive development for the benefit of workers. It's important for us to try and make sure that our country maintains the liberty and the freedom that we've had in the past. Countries across the globe are facing one of the worst economic disasters in recent history. 14 million Americans are unemployed, one in five people in the United Kingdom is living in poverty, and more than 20 percent of Spain's population can't find work. The more unequal your society gets, the more unequal it usually continues to get. Because when inequality reaches anything like the levels we see in America now, the sheer amount of wealth and income in the hands of the very wealthy mean they can begin to buy political parties, they can buy whole segments of the House and Senate. So now world leaders have to decide what to cut and what to keep. We've identified substantial financial savings. And in the days and weeks ahead, we will continue going through the budget line by line and will identify more than 100 programs that will be cut or eliminated. But it looks like our friends in Europe might be one step ahead of us. Tens of thousands of Europeans stormed Brussels, the location of the headquarters of the European Union, in response to news participating governments would be fined if they ran up deficits. Especially for countries with debts, it would be even more pressure on budget cuts, and this means cuts in social area, on the public infrastructure, and the crisis will end up being paid for by the workers. The news that more jobs will be cut, pensions frozen, and wages lowered fired up the masses. There are austerity measures going on in Europe, and the Europeans are pushing back really hard. The consequence of those is going to be to reduce the European lifestyle, but they're, they're coming no, nowhere close to the absolute destruction of the middle class that we're seeing in the United States. So why haven't Americans taken to the streets over this country's unsettling economic statistics? Yes, we have the Tea Partiers and the new wave of progressives who have been rallying in response to the Tea Partiers, but many say these Americans seem more concerned with getting their theoretical freedoms back rather than specific benefits like wages and retirement funds like what's happening over in Europe. So I think Americans and Europeans are in the street. What's kind of very odd is Americans are in the street asking for less government help because they've given up on the government, and the Europeans are in the street asking for more government help because they still believe their situation can be made better by social spending. So what's the solution? Well, many say the United States should look at our good friend, the United Kingdom, that's proposed to cut its military spending by one-fifth. While some Americans believe now is not a good time to decrease funding for social programs, some say the U.S.'s enormous military budget of $533 billion is the only logical place to make a cut. But others say even though it might be a good idea, it's not going to happen anytime soon. The problem is that because our politics are corporate owned in the United States, going to the defense budget, which is mostly outsourced to defense contractors, and saying we're going to cut into that, it's just not going to happen. Priya Shreether, RT, Washington, D.C. Well, American economist Richard Wolff says Europe still has a strong will to the left, enabling strikes and protests, but that's all but disappeared in the U.S., leaving those who are struggling without a voice. It's the decision of the Europeans to overcome all of their differences, their different cultures and languages, in a common struggle against these austerity programs. I think in Europe for the last 30 years, you've had a pretty vibrant trade union movement compared to what we have in this country. You have active socialist, communist, and other radical organizations that analyze what's going on in an ongoing way with daily newspapers and daily media outlets. You have an educated population that can see these issues. I think Americans see the issues, but have no organized basis after the long-term decline of our labor movement and our left organizations. So it's taking longer in the United States to mobilize because we have to organize from scratch 
these kinds of groupings and unities, the Europeans could rely on their tradition and put them into play much more quickly. The Europeans are ahead of us. They have a clear vision and they have the organizations that clearly can mobilize millions of people in strikes, general strikes and manifestations that force the change to put the cost of this crisis on the capitalist enterprises who were most responsible for producing it. This is RT live from Moscow.